One was a bill called S-89, the Senate version of the legislation, indicating its purpose is, quote, to provide for the common defense by requiring that all young persons in the United States, including women, that part I agree with, if, if you're going to have a bill like this, perform a period of military service or a period of civilian service in furtherance of the national defense and homeland security and for other purposes. And you understand, everybody who's in Iraq right now, they signed up. They volunteered. We pay them. They are professionals. What's the way people sign up to be members of the police force or the fire department? They sign up. We pay them a salary. We pay them benefits. We have GI bills. We have veterans' hospitals. There are little perks that exist years after you serve. We're very proud of the people who serve, just like we're proud of the police department and the fire department. And everybody who's there wants to be there. Nobody uh, who's afraid, nobody who is angry. These are the people who want to be there. Speaking practically, I would much rather have people there who want to to be there, protecting me, protecting our country, our way of life. I would much rather have people there who want to be there than to have people who don't want to be there. You want to train people who are aggressive and anxious to serve. What good would it do to take all the people who don't want to serve? People probably like you, because if you wanted to serve, you would have signed up already. What good would it do to have you there? By the way, any of you in favor of a draft, why don't you just sign up today? If you all signed up, we wouldn't need a draft. So anybody who's in favor, I'll tell you what, you go right down to the Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marine Corps office, go to the recruiting office, and just sign right up today. And save us the trouble of wasting our time, money, and effort training people who don't want to be in places like Iraq, okay? Unbelievable. The story goes on to say, the text of the bill says, it is the obligation, again, boys, this directly relates to you, it is the obligation of every citizen of the United States and every other person residing in the United States who is between the ages of 18 and 26 to perform a period of national service as prescribed in this act unless exempted under the provisions of this act, the service which would be for a minimum of two years, can be either in the military or, and that means they decide, or in a civilian capacity that, as determined by the president, promotes the national defense, including national or community service and homeland security. Essentially what they're saying here is, you know, we abolished slavery in 1865, as you know. If you don't, I just told you. But essentially, I guess they figure they can't get enough cheap labor over there at the U.S. military, so they want to go after you. Even though you've got plans to do things, go to school, bang your girlfriend, whatever it is, they want to take you and put you under the yoke of slavery for a couple of years, working for cheap wages, and quote-unquote defending your country. Whether you like it or not. It says here that under the bill, conscientious objectors may request a deferment from military training, but must still provide service, quote, that does not include any combatant training component. Alternatively, the objector can be transferred to a civilian service job. The House of Representatives version of the bill, sponsored by Representative Charlie Rangel, a Democrat from New York. See, it's Republicans and Democrats here, guys. The bill differs from an earlier attempt to reinstitute the draft because the original uh, attempt to reinstitute the draft applied only to men, only those of 18 to 22 years of age. The earlier bill required just six months of service. Now they're going to take women, too. Because they know that people like me and other rabble-rousers would say, hey, what about sexism? What about equality? What about taking some of those double-baggers and butterfaces and putting them in the fatigues, huh? Send them over there. Wherever there is. Anyway, that's enough of the story, okay? I'm not going to go any further with this. Look. Our target audience that we always love to talk about is young men. You are the people the government 
wants to take away from your life, the life you have today. You're in college. You got a girlfriend. You got plans. They want to take you out of that and force you, no matter who you are, no matter how much money you have, they want to force you in where you might die. Nobody likes to laugh more than I do on this program, but boys, this directly affects you. What do you think? Dumb like it. Wolf. Dumb like it. Wolf. Wolf. Eight hundred. Five. Eight hundred. Dumb. 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 This is insanity, and you people are insane. The Dumb like it show. <laughs> Tom like his show, 1-800-5-800-TOM. That is our telephone number. It's Lewis on the Tom like his show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? All right, Lewis. Well, Tom, my question is, I've served in the military in the, before. I'm 30 years old. And what I'm wondering is, if they were to uh, reconstitute the draft, is there any way that I would have to uh, do any more military service? I'd love to have the answer to that question for you. But let me tell you this, Lewis. Uh, Senator Chuck Hagel... Congressman Charles Rangel and anyone else who is quoted in this story refuse to come on the air and answer any of your questions about this. So you have to direct your question to your senator or congressman because they won't come on the air and discuss it. Okay. They don't want to answer to the men who would have to serve. Okay. <laughs> and we, we have been on the phone to all of them. Well... I appreciate your time, Tom. Uh, could you take me out uh, George W. Bush style? How would that be? The old uh, crash, drunk driving. Oh, drunk driving crash. Oh, hey, we can do that for you. Here you go. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> hey, you had a better uh, George W. Bush? All right, let's try that one. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Fabian, you're on the Tom Likey show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Fabian. Hey. Well, you know what? I disagree with you on this one. Why is that? Well, you know, we got to fight for our country. And... Really? So, uh, which uh, part of the military are you a member of? Uh, none whatsoever. Why not? If it's so important. Well, basically, I just. You know, it's not my thing, but I believe. It's not your thing, but uh, the point is, if you believe this, you should sign up today. And you know what? That's what I was, my future plans were, too, but, you well, know. You're, you were thinking about doing it, but you didn't actually do it. Yeah. So you right. think everyone else should serve, but not you? Is that it? Yeah, well, I have brothers in the military. If it's so important, why are you sitting at home calling a talk show? You should be down there right now signing up. Yeah, well, I believe we got to fight for our country. Well, no, you don't. You're a, you're a liar. You don't believe that because if you believed it, you'd already be doing it. Well, yeah, I got a point, but I have brothers in the military. But you are not in the military, and therefore you have no right to talk. If you believe we should be – this bill calls for everybody to serve between 18 and 26, which means you. You know, uh, they, if there was a drummer to come... Pal, nobody is restraining you from going down to the recruiting office today and signing up, right? You know what? I asked what I'm about to do, Tom. Yeah, I'll believe that when I see it, pal. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Bill on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What is of Tom? How uh, much, Bill? Uh, there was a slight disagreement that I did have with something that you said, though. What's that? That everybody in Iraq wants to be there. I find that not to be true. Well, how do you have you been to Iraq? Well, well, I know soldiers that went to Iraq. They got they got called. Everybody uh, who signed up knew that this was a possibility. And right. That you don't get a free lunch if you're signing up for the military. It's entirely possible you're going to go someplace where bombs are dropping and you're going to die. Right, very true. And, and I totally agree that, that they signed up for the possibility, but it still doesn't mean they still want to be there. Well, at least they want to be in the military, don't right. they? They want to train. Yeah, and now the they other... They want to be in a military environment. Yeah, and now the other thing that I was going to say, that I don't necessarily believe in the draft. However, it's probably the only way I'd get into the... Oh, well, then there you go. Tom like his show. <laughs> Yes, now there are calls to bring back the draft. That means everybody. 
men and women. Ages 18 to 26, if this actually passed, would be forced to either serve in the military in combat or something relating to homeland security. You would uh, not be able to uh, pursue your career goals or your girlfriend or whatever it is you're pursuing right now. Your freedom, you're free now, but they'd take you away for at least two years. How do you feel about that? Denise on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. How are you today? I'm okay, Denise. Um, I'm actually in the military, and I serve my country, and I've been in for eight years now. Great. And I don't think it is such a bad idea for people to serve in the military because I think they will get a, more, a better appreciation of what the military does to keep our country free. Well, I don't think everybody should be obligated to do that. You see, we did abolish slavery. And this is slavery. You are telling people, maybe who have the potential to make fifty, sixty, eighty, a hundred thousand dollars a year, who knows what, you're telling them that they have to work for the minuscule wages of the military and uh, against their will uh, be conscripted. Uh, it, it, that's called slavery. Actually, the military is not such a bad place. They don't take away your liberties. I've um, really I've, right. Uh, so, in other words, uh, if 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 they want you in Iraq and you want to be in San Bernardino, uh, you have the right to say, no, nah, you know what? I don't feel like go. Well, you don't have that right, but you. Well, you just said they don't take away your liberties. And you know what? All things considered, I live in the Hollywood Hills. I don't want to be in Iraq. I want to be in my house. That might be true. But I don't want my liberty taken away. You know what? I like being here doing my radio show. I don't want to be uh, in Iraq or Afghanistan. I want to be right here. You, you tell, don't tell me they don't take away your liberties. Okay, but like I said, I serve the I still have a house. You volunteered to do it. That's true. But people... That's not the same as being enslaved. That's true. That's true. But people will get a better appreciation. Of Wonderful. That. Anyone who wants to do that, uh, uh, tell you what, they can come down to your office and sign up today. And I uh, encourage them and wish them well. But you really want to work alongside people who don't want to be there? I, I wouldn't want to work alongside people well, you would be. be you would be. That's who would be uh, in your office with you every day. Well, I don't totally agree with the draft, but I feel like at least people should serve in the military just to get a feel of what people do. I know what people do. They drop bombs and kill people. That's that's what the military does. Many of them die. I know what they – do I have to commit murder to know what, what, what the, what's entailed? Well, I've never dropped a bomb on anybody in a time of war. That's what the job that no, I – Oh, you done. signed up other people to do it. That's that's the um, army and a marine. Uh huh. Yeah, and the navy doesn't kill people. I mean, they have their special ops team. That Sailors don't, don't get killed. I'm not saying that they don't, but uh -huh. that's not our main objective. What about marines? Uh, lots of marines have been killed. My God. Well, if I wanted to see what the marines do, I probably would have joined the marine corps. But, but you understand the point I make. I mean, but the, the people, why do we give people in the military uh, the, the, the paychecks and the security and the benefits that they get? It is because they don't. They of course, people like you don't advertise this fact when you're signing up the victims, but uh, the, the, the possibility they will be dead. I take that into consideration. That's why I don't lie to people. Oh, so you tell people, hey, come on in, join up. You with the who, the Navy? Yes. Yeah, join the Navy. We got all these great benefits. I, I must tell you, though, you might end up dead. I mean, everything everything has its downfall, and I tell people that. You do? They join the Navy to serve their country, and if, if in the time of war, if that's what it takes, I mean, people realize that when they sign up. And do you think, do you think the vast majority of 18-year-olds and 17-year-olds are cognizant of that possibility? Do you really believe that? I don't know. I, you know, you have a point. I know. You have a point. I know. <laughs> you always have a point, Tom. Denise, thank you for collapsing like a house of cards. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Tom like it's shown, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 
Hey, Tom, how you doing? Hi, Joe. Hey, I'm in the military right now. I'm actually serving up at Fort Lewis, and I'm 21 years old. I fall right in the age group for this draft thing. Mm -hmm. And speaking from a volunteer standpoint, this would be really, really bad for us. I mean, you're going to run into a lot of military opposition because it's very, very hard to do our job with people that don't want to be there because they're going to come in, they're going to hate it, and do a sloppy job at it. Do a sloppy job at it. There are going to be disciplinary problems. Exactly, and it's going to take more manpower to babysit them than it is to actually accomplish the goal. All to make it fair. We're going to make it fair. Everybody's going to get involved. Yeah, and it's not fair. It's not fair to the draftees. It's not fair to us. And it's not fair to the taxpayers. They're going to have to support these guys, feed them, house them, give them clothes, boats to shoot, and all that crap. And it's going to run over on us make our job harder, stretch us there than we already are, and it's just going to wear the economy out. Well, I want to say one other angle that no one's thought of, okay? You know, uh, people have pretty, been pretty supportive of every military action we've taken uh, over the last 25 years. Uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, you've read about the war protests of the 60s and 70s. Uh, you know, uh, uh, people who aren't paying attention and who have simply signed off on uh, troops in Iraq and troops in Afghanistan... If they suddenly realize they may have to go themselves, well, you watch what the public sentiment is about war then. Exactly. And a lot if you want the public to support our going into these countries, people have to believe that the people who are going volunteered for the mission. Absolutely. And more of the protest will be about actually drafting people than it will be about the war in the first place. But then, of course, as it happened during Vietnam, it will become about the war. Exactly. And that is just, you know, that's my two cents on it. But I'm perfectly happy the way I'm at with what I'm doing. And if you don't want to do it, you shouldn't have to. No doubt about it, John. Thank you. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Rick on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Great talking to you, man. I know. This, you know. Yes. Well, listen, this is, uh, I think, a really, really serious topic. And I'm actually surprised you're bringing it on your show because we all know your show is not exactly a political show. It's not, but this particular issue affects the particular guys who listen to our particular show. Well, absolutely. And, you know, these guys that, uh, of course, are listening to your show because they want to get laid. They want to get laid the right way and not laid underneath the ground. You That's know? right. Uh, you don't want to be laid out. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, something that John said, was it John, the guy that just called you? Yeah. Talking about a sloppy job. You know... Who says they don't do a sloppy job the way it is now? I mean, could could it be sloppier? I mean, the situation in Iraq right now, could it be Well, keep in mind, I, and, and I must say on behalf of our troops, who I support, uh, whether I agree with where we go or what we do with them, uh, you can't blame the troops. The troops are doing what they're told. Right, I know, I understand. We're not drafting uh, generals. We're not drafting members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. We're uh, drafting innocent 18-year-olds, that's what we're talking about doing, who will be forced to do what they're told by higher-ups. Whatever is uh, sloppy right now, it's not the fault of the troops. Right, and, and we're, 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 I'm not, I wasn't implying that the people that are on the ground are doing a sloppy job. I think they are taking orders. I think they don't have a choice. And a lot of the things that I think we, we are addressing now because of this possible draft, Bill to, to come in is that when you won't have that choice, you will have to take the orders. You're not allowed to make decisions on your own. Think for your own. And this is probably one of the most serious things that uh, could be happening uh, this year. It's, oh, it's ironic that it's happening during a, a, a presidential election. Of course it is. Well, how many people, if, you know, you think are really aware, for instance, that the media is not even allowed to show? How many coffins are being brought in, you know, from uh, our soldiers? Well, that's always been true. Uh, that's always been true. Uh, uh, we will never admit how many casualties we have. We always want to appear stronger. Uh, and certainly they try to keep cameras away from any of that stuff. Now we have what we call embedded reporters, who are really reporters who agree to just, like, not report on anything that we don't want them reporting on. Right. So, <laughs> Um, you know, we don't know the whole story, but, but here's one, here's one example of where it hits home. The guys who listen to this show might be enslaved by the government and forced to go to places like Iraq and Afghanistan against their will. Now, if there was ever a time we're going to talk about a news story on this show, this is it. 
Because my boys will be heading overseas. I don't want to see that happen. That's right. No, I totally agree. And I, and I think that there's another point, too. A lot of people that are in the military right now, and I have friends that are in the military, they saw the military as an escape, as maybe a way, hey, you know, I don't have enough money to go to college, or I don't want to go to college. And uh, it's not, I don't want to say they get lied and deceived into getting into the military, but once, once they're there, uh, for a lot of the times they realize, you know, I'm stuck on a deal here that I can't get out of. Well, there's more warnings on a pack of cigarettes than there are at a recruiting office. And uh, I'm sure when they're trying to sign young boys up out there, I'm sure they are not saying, and by the way, you've got to get all these great benefits, of course, to pay for them, you might end up dead. Well, yeah, but a lot of people don't believe that. that you know, they'll say, yeah, I know. I'm well, aware. that's because 18-year-old, like, yeah, you understand, though, when you're 18, you don't believe anything's going to kill you. That's, that's right. why 18-year-olds smoke cigarettes and have sex without condoms and drive 90 miles an hour, throw the beer cans out the window. It's because they, they believe they can cheat death. And that's the exact uh, target market that uh, military recruiters go after. Yeah. Well, I think it's a great show you're running, man, and, and these are the topics that I think that, yeah, you mentioned everybody's going to be concerned about, and if you can stretch this as much as you can, I think the more people listen, we've got a better chance of avoiding this. I don't know how, but I think that the more people are aware, I think the more people... Well, well I, I know the, the people in the target audience, the target demographic that this would affect, are the least likely to watch the news. Right. They probably don't even know about this. Yeah, I, I think it's genius of you bringing it up, man. Rick? You're doing a great service to your country. Thank you for the call. Tom, 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 Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. I rarely listen to you. My husband is a huge fan. And every time we get in the car, it, it changes to your station, and we have to listen to Tom. Oh, I hate that. It's the... <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. And there are now calls uh, in your nation's capital to bring back the military draft, and that would mean you, 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 if you're between eighteen and twenty-six, you would be drafted. What do you think about that? Let's say hello here to Kenneth on the Tom Like His Show. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Hi, Kenneth. Hi, uh, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, just want to say, uh, you know, I was 19 years old when I, I was, I'm a Marine right now, I'm a reservist. I was 19 years old when I served out there in, uh, in Iraq in uh, the first official invasion. I came back at 19. I just served 20 in September. I just want to say, like, the draft, uh, the age range it's looking at, that was the average age out there, 19 years old, for the Marines that were fighting on the ground. I mean, seeing straight up combat. And the only thing I could say is, War, war in itself is, is, is insane, uh, mentally, emotionally. I mean, I came back and, uh, you know, you come back with, like, this grudge and this anger towards everyone that you meet. And uh, people are getting drafted, like like the previous caller, that soldier that I was calling from, uh, that fort or whatever. Uh, if the, uh, they tell you in the Marine Corps, if you don't want to be here, you know, don't be here. Because uh, you will cost the lives of the other Marines that are trying to do their job, and if your mind is not prepared to handle that type of stress and uh, you're drafted and put into that situation, I mean, you're just going to literally blow up and one, you know, one, one uh, unsafe or unhonorable uh, little guy that doesn't want to be there could cause uh, ten guys' lives and ruin the ten families' lives. So if anything, this draft uh, is just going to be, uh, I, I see it as a really huge uh, crash for uh, a uh, change in society or something, the way we're going to view the military in the future if uh, it goes down. Yeah, well, uh, and not only that, we're going to be spending money training yeah. completely incompetent and unwilling subjects uh, to participate. Exactly. Like, the taxpayers are going to be, I mean, obviously the economy isn't as good as it is now, and obviously this war is costing, I don't even want to try to calculate, but it's going to obviously uh, kill the economy more, but not only that, it's more people will end up dying because there's going to be the majority we all we always talk about people dying but let's make this real specific it's, uh -huh. when we say people dying we think it's other people okay here's who we're talking about mm. the guy listening today who will die it's not yep. other people yep it's you yep oh yeah 
Most definitely you're not. We love talking about how many people are dying, you know, 10,000 miles away over there somewhere. Uh, 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 uh. Now it's going to be you. And not only that, I mean, there's going to be guys that are going to, I think the choice is once you get drafted is either you show up or you go to jail. Right. Isn't that the case? And, you know, guys are going to be like, I don't want to go to jail. What are the, you know, what other choice do they have? So they're going to go out there and they have families or they have a girlfriend. I mean, when I was out there, there was guys that weren't getting letters from their girlfriends, and they were literally going insane, oh. wondering if she's seeing somebody else, well, wondering they want to get a letter of comfort. Because not only uh, your fellow Marines are going to keep you comfort, but you want to hear some word from home. And people are going to leave their lives behind. I mean, they're going to literally go insane. And it's just going to, uh, it's just going to be a one big old gaggle, you know. It's just going to, I don't know, it's just going to be insane. But I just want to say that anyone out there listening at my age, I mean, just uh, if, I, if anything, if that comes down to it and, you know, like I said, I'm 20 right now, just uh, do what you have to do and just go through with it. Hopefully it doesn't have to come to that, but yeah. that's all I can say for right now. Kenneth, thanks a lot. Good call. Appreciate it. Our email address, by the way, is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com or if you've got comments about the show itself you can call our 24 hour day comment line at area code 310 842 9592 The Tom Likas Show